This lecture is acid-base disorders and calculations. For each of the following conditions, we will define the typical lab values, common causes, and clinical manifestations. Respiratory acidosis, metabolic acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, and metabolic alkalosis. We will discuss and give an example of the calculation of simple acid-base disorders to help you begin. The primary types of acid-base disorders are either respiratory cause, metabolic cause, or mixed. They are also either acidosis or alkalosis. In the previous lecture, we talked about how respiratory and renal mechanisms can compensate for the different acid-base conditions. Now, respiratory situations can also cause acid-base conditions. And non-respiratory acid and base load can cause a metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. A low pH is an acidosis and a high pH is an alkalosis. Let's start with respiratory acidosis. Respiratory acidosis is a low pH due to some respiratory condition. For these conditions, I want you to think of situations in which the body will be retaining carbon dioxide. So when you look at your lab values, you will see that the pH is low and that the carbon dioxide explains that low pH, meaning that the patient has hypercapnia or high carbon dioxide. So a respiratory acidosis is a lack of ventilation or some related respiratory process in relation to the metabolic production of carbon dioxide. What do I mean by metabolic production of carbon dioxide? I mean the carbon dioxide that is being produced by the body cells through the normal process of metabolism. Ultimately, where does carbon dioxide come from? It comes from the cells undergoing cellular respiration. Remember in our metabolism lecture, we talked about oxidative phosphorylation and the Krebs cycle producing carbon dioxide waste. The respiratory system is responsible for removing that carbon dioxide waste. If there's a problem in the respiratory system, such as a lack of appropriate ventilation, that carbon dioxide waste builds up and effectively becomes an acid in the body. So a respiratory acidosis is due to some respiratory cause of a buildup of carbon dioxide. What are some common causes? Common causes are respiratory depression. Some medications can cause respiratory depression, over sedation. Brainstem trauma can also cause respiratory depression. Paralysis of respiratory muscles, disorders of the chest wall that don't allow for appropriate ventilation, disorders of the lung, and airway obstruction that don't allow for the, enough ventilation to remove that carbon dioxide. For patients, carbon dioxide is able to cross the blood-brain barrier, causing a low pH of cerebrospinal fluid and vasodilation. This can lead to headaches, restlessness, blurred vision, followed by lethargy, muscle twitching, tremors, and even up to convulsions or coma. So respiratory acidosis can become severe. Metabolic acidosis is an acidosis that is non-respiratory. There's a lot of causes of a metabolic acidosis, but it's very key that you put in your notes, it's not a respiratory cause. In this case, you have a low pH, but your carbon dioxide levels will not explain that low pH. There's something else present, some other acid in the blood that is increased, or some loss of bicarbonate that causes that acidosis. The pH will be low, and the bicarbonate will be low. Why is the bicarbonate low? Think about what we talked about in the previous lecture. When acid is high in the blood, what happens to that bicarbonate buffer system? When acid is high in the blood, the bicarbonate soaks up that acid in its buffer role and liberates the carbon dioxide. 
So there will be what we call an anion gap. There will be a gap if you measure the anions compared to the cations in the blood because we've lost bicarbonate. So the primary anions in the blood are bicarbonate and chloride. They normally balance with the cations in the blood, especially sodium and potassium. So normally if you look at the balance between sodium and potassium and bicarbonate and chloride, they have an expected anion gap. If there's another source of acid that's not a carbon dioxide, bicarbonate levels get soaked up and there's now a gap between the cations and what used to be bicarbonate. What are some common causes of metabolic acidosis? Well, think of some non-respiratory reasons that acid can build up in the blood. There can be lactic acid buildup because of poor perfusion or hypoxemia. There can be a renal failure. Diabetic ketoacidosis is also one of the most common causes of metabolic acidosis. There can be ingestion of an acid or certain types of diarrhea, particularly diarrhea that causes large losses of bicarbonate. We'll learn in the GI system that there's a lot of bicarbonate secretion in the GI tract. So you can lose bicarbonate, which will cause an acidotic state. Patients, again, will report headaches and lethargy. For metabolic acidosis, there's a deep particular respiration called small breathing, and you learn this in your clinical skills courses. Here's a little more about the anion gap. Anion gap is used to help determine the cause of metabolic acidosis. There's a difference between the measured positive and negative ions in the blood. There's an expected gap due to the normal unmeasured anions. So the normal anion gap is usually around 8 to 16. If you suspect that a patient has a metabolic acidosis, meaning that the pH is low, but the carbon dioxide does not explain that low pH, then you're going to calculate the anion gap. And you'll see that there are certain types of metabolic acidosis that have a large anion gap. To calculate the anion gap, here's the equation. You're going to take the cations, primarily sodium, although sometimes we add potassium just to be sure, and subtract the bicarbonate and the chloride concentration. A normal anion gap should be between 8 and 16. If the anion gap is larger than 16, then this suggests that an acid is present in the blood that is removing the bicarbonate. Think of a diabetic ketoacidosis, for example, where you have buildup of ketoacids in the blood that would be soaking up that bicarbonate as the bicarbonate tries to buffer those acids. We only calculate anion gap for a metabolic acidosis. We don't calculate it for anything else. So if it's not a metabolic acidosis, you're good. Okay, respiratory alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis is a high pH of the blood due to some respiratory cause. This is usually because of excess loss of carbon dioxide through the respiratory system. Think of times where you might have excess ventilation relative to carbon dioxide production. These could be hypermetabolic states like fever, thyrotoxicosis, anxiety, panic attacks but it's often due to provider error in excess mechanical ventilation in the hospital. The pH will be high and the carbon dioxide levels will be low. Patients can have dizziness, confusion, paresthesias, and up to convulsions and coma. Finally, metabolic alkalosis. Metabolic alkalosis is a high pH that is not due to a respiratory cause. So it's anything else besides respiratory. Think of states in which you might retain bicarbonate or have excessive loss of metabolic acids. Common causes here would be prolonged vomiting, gastric suctioning, 
excessive bicarbonate intake, or certain hormonal and diuretic effects. The pH will be high, but the CO2 will not explain that high pH. Patients can exhibit volume depletion. There's something called contraction alkalosis that we'll learn about later in the renal system. They may have low serum calcium because a certain amount of acid is needed to liberate free calcium in the blood. If they have low serum calcium, that can lead to paresthesias, tetany, and seizures. They might also have slow, shallow respirations, confusion, tachycardia, and dysrhythmias. So there's a quick trick for acid-based disorders. Let me put down my iPad so I can show it to you. So when we look at acid-based disorders, we first measure the pH. And then we measure the carbon dioxide and bicarbonate levels. So if you look, and we're thinking about acidosis, if blood pH is low and the CO2 is high, your thumbs are in opposite directions. That means you have a respiratory reason for the acidosis. If blood pH is low, but carbon dioxide levels are also low, both thumbs are down, and you have a metabolic cause for the acidosis. The same thing we can do for alkalosis. If pH is high, but the carbon dioxide is low, then that's a respiratory cause for the alkalosis. If the pH is high, but the carbon dioxide is also high, that doesn't explain the alkalosis, and now we have a metabolic alkalosis. So for the metabolic conditions, the thumbs go in the same direction. Metabolic acidosis, all thumbs are down. Metabolic alkalosis, all thumbs are up. So the calculation method is step one. Determine if you have an acidosis or an alkalosis based on the pH. Then look at the CO2. Does the CO2 indicate that you have a respiratory cause? If the CO2 is high, then you should be in acidotic state if it's a respiratory cause. If the CO2 is low, you should be in alkalotic state if it's a respiratory cause. If not, then it's metabolic and we need to look further down. So step three would be compare the pCO2 and the pH and see, is there evidence of respiratory or not? Look at the other information. What are your oxygen levels? That can help you look at ventilation changes. What are your bicarbonate levels? Do you have an inappropriate retention or excretion of bicarbonate? What is your respiratory rate? Maybe you have some respiratory compensation. And what is your anion gap? Step four is a little further than we're going to go today, is looking at more mixed or compensated acid-base conditions. We'll do this more as we get further into your clinical training. This is a figure from your textbook that explains exactly that same calculation method. So let's apply this to a patient. This is a patient who has type 1 diabetes. He's now a medical student, and his diabetes has remained in control, but his couple years, first couple years of medical school have been difficult. When he first started his surgery clerkship, his regular schedule of meals and insulin injections was completely disrupted, so his type 1 diabetes is now less controlled. One morning, after a very late night in trauma surgery, he drank some orange juice and ate a couple donuts. At 7 a.m., he drank more juice because he was very thirsty. He mentioned to the student next to him that he was feeling kind of strange and his heart was racing. At 9 a.m., he excused himself from the operating room because he thought he was going to faint. Later that morning, he was found unconscious in the call room. He was transferred immediately to the emergency department where vitals were taken and a standard set of labs was drawn. Special thanks to Linda Costanzo for her book, Physiology Cases and Problems, where I got this case from. So here's the set of labs that were drawn for David. Pause and use your method for acid-base calculation to try to calculate what acid-base disorder does David have. Remember, you're going to start with your pH, 
go to your PCO2, and then go to your bicarbonate or any of your other information that may help you out. All right, did you get it? Let's walk through the different steps to see what we find for David. Step one, determine if it's acidosis or alkalosis based on the pH. Well, his pH is 7.22, that's low, so he's in acidosis. Then, look at the CO2. Is the CO2 high, at which we can say the acidosis is a respiratory cause? The answer is no, his CO2 is actually low. So now we're starting to point in the direction of a metabolic acidosis. He has a low pH and a low CO2. The pH is not due to CO2 levels, so it's not respiratory. The bicarbonate is low. Now we want to calculate the anion gap. Did you see an anion gap? Yes. If we look at the anion gap calculation here, the anion gap is huge. Remember the normal anion gap is between 8 and 16. His calculated anion gap, depending on whether you included potassium or not, is around 40. An anion gap indicates there's some other source of metabolic acid. What do we know about this patient? Well, we know that he has uncontrolled type 1 diabetes. What could be the source of acid that's causing that anion gap? Well, we know in patients with uncontrolled diabetes that keto acids can build up. So it's very likely that this patient has a metabolic acidosis because of uncontrolled type 1 diabetes and the buildup of keto acids. We also have some information that he's hyperventilating. Hyperventilating can help us point that the respiratory system is trying to compensate by removing that CO2 to balance the acid. So what acid-based disorder does David have? In this case, he has a metabolic acidosis with respiratory compensation. This is very likely due to the overproduction of keto acids, causing a loss of bicarbonate as a bicarbonate attempts to buffer those excess keto acids. That leads to a hyperventilation as compensation in order to attempt to decrease that PCO2. How did this case end up? Based on the information provided in his physical exam and lab values, it was determined that David was in diabetic ketoacidosis. He was given an IV infusion of saline and insulin. Later, after his blood glucose had decreased and his plasma potassium had decreased, glucose and potassium were added to the infusion. David stayed overnight, and by the next morning, his blood glucose, electrolytes, and blood gas values were back to normal. Okay, that's the end of our acid-base calculations lecture. Let me know if you have any questions.